I don't want to talk too much uh, about me and too much about Get Taxi. I'm really, really keen to understand the different businesses here because I think that's why everyone's come here is to, to kind of figure out what they want to take from the, uh, from the event itself. But there's a few things that I think we at Get Taxi um, and also from my background that I think you can adopt into technology businesses and I think there's a few underlying kind of points that I want to try and make. First of all, in terms of Get Taxi, it's an on-demand mobile app. Uh, we're we're co currently live in 32 cities across the world. Um, and like Jim said, it's $207 million worth of funding, which is huge amounts of money. Um, we're currently growing approximately between three and 400% year on year. Um, so it's huge growth, it's a hyper growth company. Um, but what's probably most important is, uh, is, is my background is, is not from technology whatsoever. I actually started my first business when I was 20. Um, it was a rugby coaching business, so slight kind of difference there. Uh, on the way, I had different tech startups and kind of started my own ideas. Um, and really come from a completely different background. And I think it's something that's been touched upon quite a bit today is people's way of thinking is, is the real incredible thing. Um, it's your adaptation and your use of technology that's where the actual the smart stuff comes in. I want to kind of talk a little bit about that today. Um, I've kind of got three points which I want to touch upon. Um, the first one is the idea of an MVP, so a minimal, minimal viable product. I personally think entrepreneurs, um, particularly in the UK, but also globally, there's, there's this real idea of ownership when you're starting a company. Um, my advice and, and something that we try and do at Get Taxi a lot is how do you get an MVP out into the market and actually try and gain some insight? Um, particularly for, the, for you guys sitting here, I'm sure it kind of resonates is, is when is it ready to launch? When can we actually go to market? At Get Taxi, we, we ask ourselves this question. So we try and say, if I was to launch a bi the business tomorrow, what, how would I do it? And if I, even further than that, if I was to launch the business with no money, forget the $207 million for a second, if I was to launch it with no money, how would we do it? And it's this bringing it right back to basics. And I think even just now, we get taxi, we've just launched six new cities within the UK. This was our methodology. Continuing to think, how do we bootstrap? Bootstrapping is the fun stuff. It's, it's the really exciting and, and interesting things where you actually start thinking completely differently. And that, when that comes to actually building a product, you really need to boil down into the product itself and, and to the technology of itself. Let's, let's say, for example, you're building a, an e-commerce website or you're building a mobile app. The way we try and divide it is if you're thinking about the features, so you're thinking, okay, so what features is my website going to have? Or what features is this app or this software need to have? Boil it down into two things, into what's crucial what is truly crucial to actually put into my product and what is just nice to have. And it's actually a really interesting exercise to say, okay, well, yes, we do need that, but yeah, maybe we can put that in second version. I actually think we, we try and over-engineer our products sometimes, and this necessarily doesn't just go for technology, it actually also goes for starting a, a business within a, within a new city or with a new territory or maybe launching a new product. We sometimes over-engineer these ideas and start to think, well, it needs to be complete in order for me to be in operating. Those first couple of steps are, are some of the most interesting insights that you get to in, into your company. The honest truth is we all start out with a plan, but I'm sure every entrepreneur knows that can change very, very quickly. So if you're spending lots and lots of time on developing something which you think is going to be uh, the complete package, you're going to go to market and very quickly find out actually it wasn't and you spent all that time. So this idea of an MVP, I think we need to talk about it more and more. I'm really, really keen to hear what the business is here to figure out actually you're spending too much time on developing the product and actually not just getting it to market. So it's a really, really good way to kind of start thinking about it. Equally, um, I think we can talk about the technology, we can talk about the aspects and what I meet at, I meet a lot of kind of very, very smart entrepreneurs who start telling me about what they've built and the fantastic developers and all this incredible pieces of technology which they've really spent so much, much, so much time on. 
Um, and then they kind of ask themselves the question, how, how do you get customers? Um, and I think it's a common mistake of, again, over-engineered products, but not necessarily thinking about where can you begin to be a little bit smart in trying to acquire customers. Um, so at Get Taxi, we've actually tried to engineer this in a completely different way. Um, we created a growth team, which is my role at the company is, uh, is head of growth. Now you kind of ask, what does that actually do? And th the beauty of that, no one knows. So it's kind of, you, you move kind of, uh, you're allowed to move pretty, uh, pretty easily and, 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 and simply. But in essence, I, I sit between marketing role, between a sales role, between an operational role. Um, and we really look at all aspects of the business and say, okay, we need to continue growing at the pace uh, that, we, that we are at the moment and we need to grow even faster. Our actual ambition is to grow 10x, so it's to grow by 10. So we're growing by three, by four at the moment. So the ambition is to grow by 10. And that's how, how we kind of think of that as a company. Now, it's easy to say and it's easy to throw around these big numbers, but how do you actually begin to acquire customers and particularly in new markets or new products or, or, or new things that you're trying to bring to market? Well, you may have heard of these terms called growth hacks. I don't know if people have heard of them before. And it's a real buzzword. A real, real thing that where people are like, oh yeah, but growth hacks, it doesn't actually mean anything. Um, but I like to think actually at Get Taxi, we've begun to develop some, we've begun to develop some really smart ways of thinking, um, which has allowed us to, to differentiate ourselves from the competitors. Like, like Jim mentioned, we have got some huge competitors in our market in a very incredibly competitive space, not just in the UK, but globally, which is being transformed almost overnight um, with huge amounts of money. So we've got to really begin to diversify. Um, and to, to demonstrate that innovation can come from anywhere, um, I want to tell you a very quick story about how we came up with a product to get taxi. It actually came from when I was back at home in Liverpool with my mum during Christmas and we were shopping in the local Asda. So just to prove that innovation can come from anywhere. And uh, walking out of the Asda, and I remember seeing a payphone, the old plastic payphones that you get at the front of supermarkets, which connect you to a minicab company. And being in the taxi industry, this kind of struck with me, and I thought, we've got to do something with that. It's very, it's very um, linked to what, uh, to what Lucy was saying before about the moment, thinking about the moment of when someone picks that phone up, they want a taxi. So this was on my mind and we took this back to, the, to or I came back to London, took it back to our R&D team. And what we actually did was we built a version of our mobile app, which is available to download. We built it on a tablet, built it on a tablet and actually then began to install Android tablets in venues. So in restaurants, in bars, in hotels, in supermarkets, in hospitals. What we've then done is actually capture the person right at that particular moment. All they had to do, put your phone number in, press, and a taxi turns up. Now the beauty of that from a technology point of view was that we could actually provide a fixed point location to all our taxi drivers. So we could say, guys, you know, if you're driving around, um, you may want to stand, you come around this area because we know this is how many taxis get ordered from this area at time. From that kind of tiny spark, with an Asda in Speak in Liverpool. It all came from there. That's how we developed the product. And I think it shows you, you know, that's how you can begin to think outside the box. Now, not everyone has the money to put an R&D team on kind of uh, building a brand new pro product on a tablet. So what about some more low cost, very simple growth hacks? So we've just done one recently. We've, we've done two uh, recently, but one which I think is actually really interesting. Um, and it came from a huge mistake and it was my mistake as well. So we use promotional codes um, to acquire users. So we partner with events or we partner with um, maybe event spaces, it may be other brands and say, hey, download our app and get 10 pounds free. Now for this particular event, um, we created, created a code and we, let, we, we shared the code and I didn't realize I was meant to make 100 codes and I might have made 1,000 codes by accident. It was a total error. However, someone at an event decided that 10 pound, for fantastic. I'm gonna share this with my friend. How, so in about uh, eight hours, I think we had 896 people who downloaded the app and obviously taken 10 pounds. So this is looking like quite a costly exercise. 
And the CEO was looking at me thinking, okay, maybe we need to get rid of this guy because he doesn't know what he's doing. However, it actually struck another idea in my head. It made me think about kind of human culture and the way we, and the way we perceive things. Now, bearing in mind, we give these £10 coupons away online, on Twitter, but people weren't actually downloading them. They weren't taking it up. But when they thought they were getting a good deal, when they thought they were they're getting one behind us and we didn't know about it, that's how it worked. So recently, what we've began to do is actually to leak these codes to networks. We'll put them on Twitter. We'll put them on different places and actually just filter it, pretending that we don't even know. Now, secretly, we're kind of acquiring users in this fantastic way, but it begins to think about the culture of just, just human nature, that we all like to get something for free, and particularly if someone doesn't know about it, we're getting one on. So there's a, there's a nice little tip for, for some people there. Um, so obviously, th these are really smart ways to begin to acquire customers. Um, my next point, though, is, is very much looking at once you've acquired your customers, I personally think that British business, we're just not aggressive enough. Um, and it's something I push a lot, and, and luckily with my role, I get to work within our, our New York team. We've also got a, an R&D office over in Israel. Uh, so we see different cultures, and we've got an office in Moscow as well, so we see different cultures. Um, the UK, I still think we're quite reserved. I still think we're quite cynical. I still don't think we're ready to kind of really push our businesses and be totally aggressive. Um, and this is something that I'm, I'm really trying to promote within startups is once you do have a product, once you have taken those steps, let's really drive it. And let's figure out how, what, what we actually need to do to maybe take a few risks. And I know entrepreneurs are kind of born with elements of risk, but I think we need a whole kind of mindset change to be able to push our businesses. And I'm sure with, within startups and within incubators like Entrepreneurial Spot, that's, that's kind of what we're learning. But overall, I think there needs to be a bit of a culture shift there. So like I said at the start, um, I'm really, really keen to hear about different people's businesses here. So I'm really looking forward to the questions. My kind of three key points, though, are think about MVP. Think about if you had to start your business tomorrow with no money, how would you do it? That might mean you've got to go knock on doors. And I'll give you a practical example. When we, had to st when we started in Edinburgh and Glasgow, what do you think we did to recruit drivers? We went and knocked on windows. That's how we started. And we're, we're a huge company, but we still do these things. So think about that. How you start tomorrow with no money. Second one, how are you going to acquire your customers? How are you going to be very different? How are you going to be smart? That's the real creative stuff, which you know, you've got total license. If, if people are doing things in one way, well, why just do the same? You're going to be cast into the exact same crowd. This is where you can begin to innovate. This is where you can begin to rethink your product. There's no startup book that will tell you how to run your business. You can read all the books that you want, but ultimately you are self-employed for a reason. You are self-employed because you get to decide what you do every single day. So definitely think about um, how you're going to acquire those users in a, in a unique way to yourself. And then growth and scale. Think about it from a technology point of view. Is your product built for scale? Can you bolt on an additional part? Can you then think, what is the next step for you guys to actually take it to another level? Those three things in sequence, I think, is my kind of recipe for, for what UK startups with our approach and how that needs to begin to change. You know, I think GetTaxi is a great example of a company who can is almost limitless because the honest truth is our technology allows us to be able to adopt in new cities and to be able to grow extremely quickly. But it's, as the examples probably prove, it's all powered by ideas. It's all powered by how you actually implement that technology itself. So I'm really, really keen to have a good chat with you guys and to listen about your businesses. But thank you very much for listening.